Hi everyone, welcome back on Study Room. So, in this video, we are starting the second phase of the chapter, which is types of vegetation. Now, we know that India has different types uh, and varieties of flora and fauna, right? So, what um, makes them different? Uh, due to climate, so majorly there are two reasons, due to climate and relief. Okay, due to climate and relief, uh, the types of vegetation means simply a type of plant or a type of tree that will be grown in a particular area will be different. Okay, so for example, trees um, growing in mountainous region will be different than the trees growing in plains, right? So now to understand this, what types of vegetation um, are, you know, we have in different regions, we have divided uh, all over India into different types of regions, okay? And these regions have uh, uh, some or the other uh, kind of vegetation that is grown. So we'll understand what type of vegetation is grown and um, uh, and what are their differentiation, okay? So very first thing is import types of vegetation. So there are five major types of vegetation. We have first tropical evergreen forest, deciduous forest, thorn forest, mountain forest and mangrove forest. So these are the five types we will be studying in uh, the coming slides. Okay. So now let's look at the uh, picture first, the uh, map and try, let's understand what type of uh, forest and where are they located. Okay. So first, if we talk about uh, tropical evergreen forest, tropical evergreen forests are in the western coast and somewhere in the eastern uh, sides of our country. Next, we tropical, talk about tropical deciduous forest. So they cover mostly central India. Okay. Next, thorn forest. Thorn forest um, are in the, uh, means they do not have much uh, greener there. So thorn forests are in the uh, western sides in uh, you know gujarat area west area and next we have mangrove uh, which are you know very uh, a few um, and next we have a uh, tropical deciduous yes okay so let's uh, study each one of them starting with tropical evergreen forest so let's understand about tropical evergreen forest the rainfall in tropical evergreen forests are over 200 uh, centimeters and they also um, have both, you know, they have dry seasons and wet seasons. So mostly it's uh, uh, dry and wet both, okay. So it have heavy precipitation which happens in the tropical evergreen forest means the rainfall is very, very high and uh, the rainfall being very, very high means that the roots of the tree, the trees are getting water all the time so that is why trees will be um, grown there okay so if in case um, if there is a shedding season as well so if, if the trees are shedding the new uh, the new uh, leaves will be growing by the time okay if the old uh, leaves are shedding new will be coming that is why the trees you will not see any tree being pale here uh, a tree will have full of leaves all the time. That is why we call them as evergreen forest. Okay, they are evergreen. Third important point here is the height of trees here are 60 meters and above. Um, moving to the fourth point. Fourth point here is now um, in tropical evergreen forest, they are um, little dry season, little warm season as well and uh, heavy precipitation means rainfall as well. So we find trees here and due to a uh, little warmness, we also find shrubs and creepers here. I'm not very good with drawing but yeah, these are shrubs guys and these are creepers, okay. Next, now where do we find these forests? These forests are uh, found in Western Ghats, Lakshadweep Island, Assam, Andabar, Nicobar and Tamil Nadu. Um, these uh, forests also grow some commercially important uh, trees which are ebony, um, mahogany, rosewood, rubber and cinchona or some people call it cinchona as well. Yeah, so these are um, our uh, five important points about tropical evergreen forest. Now let's talk about animals uh, we found in tropical evergreen forest. 
Now talking about animals, we see, uh, we find animals, monkey, deer, uh, most important animal in this region is one horned rhinoceros. I hope I could draw these. Um, so one horned rhinoceros are also found um, in this region and we also find varieties of birds, bats, sloths, scorpions and snakes. Our next uh, type of uh, vegetation is tropical deciduous forest. Okay, so tropical deciduous forest Again, we have five major points to understand in that. Uh, tropical deciduous forests are majorly found in the areas uh, which have um, 70 to 200 centimeter of rainfall. Okay, and we further divide tropical deciduous forest into two parts which are um, moist uh, deciduous forest and dry deciduous forest. So, moist deciduous forest have the uh, rainfall of 100 to 200 centimeters and they are mostly found in eastern parts uh, eastern parts which are foothills of Himalayas, Jharkhand, West Odisha, Chhattisgarh yeah and um, uh, the kind of trees we found there are teak, bamboo, sal, blueberry okay and now dry deciduous forest talking about dry deciduous forest it's the area which have 70 to 100 centimeter of rainfall and we found uh, uh, neem peak and sal um, in dry deciduous forest okay tropical deciduous forest is mostly available in india it's in all over central india and the kind of animals we get there are mostly lion tiger pig elephant deer monkey okay so now uh, these are the regions where rainfall is not much pre uh, uh, prevalent right so the trees they did not get enough water for the survival so what they do they shed their leaves so they shed their leaves about about six to eight weeks um, in dry summer season so that they uh, can survive and get the moisture from the roots okay so that is why they shed trees shed their leaves so this is about tropical deciduous forest next we'll understand about thorn forest and uh, scrubs now we will talk about thorn forest and scrubs. So thorn forest and scrubs are found in the region where the rainfall is less than 70. Thorn forest and scrubs are found in the region where rainfall are um, where rainfall are less than 70 centimeter. Uh, which means that the rainfall is very very low it's it barely rains we can understand that and these re, uh, forests are found mostly in india in the western uh, region okay northwestern region majorly gujarat rajasthan madhya pradesh uttar pradesh chhattisgarh and haryana now what kind of uh, trees uh, we get there so we have acacia palm euphorbia and cacti We'll talk about in detail uh, a structure of a tree uh, which is in thorn forest and scrubs. So basically in these forests the roots of these trees are very very long so that they can go deep into um, to find the water and moisture for themselves. Okay now we'll talk about the stem. So stems are mostly succulent so that they can absorb water for a longer period of time because obviously it's, it uh, barely rains in that area. Now we'll talk about the leaves. So leaves are majorly thick because uh, it won't evaporate. That leaves are small and comparatively and thick because um, it won't, you know, otherwise it won't evaporate very easily. Now we'll talk about um, what kind of animals we, uh, we get to see in these areas. So we have mostly camels, of course, horses, wild ass, lion, tiger, rabbit, rats, foxes and wolves. Okay, so this is about thorn forest in scrub where the precipitation or the rainfall is very, very um, low. Next thing to discuss here is our next type of vegetation which is mountain forest. Now we will talk, be talking about mountain forest. So uh, before talking about mountain forest, let's understand this. What happens in equator? Equator has more trees because of the direct uh, rays, okay, direct sun rays which are falling into equator and the uh, um, northern uh, slopes or the uh, southern slope have less trees. Why? Because the rays are not very direct, okay, they are indirect. So similarly a kind of pattern is followed in the mountainous region as well. 
in the lower region of a mountain we see, get to see different kind of trees uh, and plants and lots of vegetation but as we move forward and we move forward in terms of altitude we see vegetation being depleting okay for many reason and uh, these uh, natural vegetations are a succession in the same order as we have uh, studied in the tropical uh, forest of tunda region okay now uh, let's we have segregated mountain and we have tried to study it in that way first we have wet temperate forest wet temperate forest are between uh, 1000 to 2000 meters and the kind of trees we found there are oak and chestnut and other trees which um, you know usually conserve, consumes moist then we have temperate forest temperate forest we found in when we move more ahead more uh, to more height approx 1500 uh, meters to 3000 meters and these are pine um, silver fir okay and all so next we have if we move more forward above 3000 we'll see grasslands we barely get to see any tree okay and then the, if you go more than 3600 meters of height you will see a uh, alpine kind of vegetation um, in the in these mountainous region okay so which who are the people who live in these regions these are the nomadic communities uh, who live in uh, you know in the mountainous region nomadic communities are basically pastorals who move from one place to another in search of resources uh, shelter food and these are the people who usually have animals uh, with them um, animals relating to the environment okay now what kind of animals we get to see here so we have different type of animals that we see here we see rare red panda uh, goat deer kashmir stag spotted deer um, wild rabbit and all the other animals okay so this is about mountain region next we'll study a uh, mangrove forest what are mangrove forests okay next are we have a uh, mangrove forest so what happened in mangrove forest um the to understand this first let's understand one basic point rivers travel all over the states of our you know different states of our country and then merges into the ocean river water is not um salty but oceanic water is salty so what kind of plant can be uh, there who could tolerate a, a place um, where they could be salt and they could not be salt. Talking about mangrove forests, so to, uh, mangrove trees are basically found in coastal areas, okay. So they are found in coastal areas. So coastal areas are those areas where salt can be high or cannot be, where tides, chances of uh, tides coming are also there, okay. So, uh, mangrove is the ultimate forest or the ultimate tree, mangrove tree, which survive in the coastal areas, okay. And the roots of mangrove tree are within the, uh, are under the river, okay. So, so man roots of mangrove tree in India are in Ganga, Mahanadi, Krishna, Godavari, okay, uh, and Kaveri as well. So, these all are covered with mangrove vegetation. Now, when Ganga and Brahmaputra uh, delta, in the Ganga and Brahmaputra delta, the kind of trees we find are Sundari tree, okay? Uh, and we also find in this area the kind of uh, trees, for example, palm and coconut. Uh, if talking about, uh, talking about animals, the very important thing we understand here is the most important animal we find in this region is royal bengal tiger we also have turtles and crocodiles um, in this area so this is the mangrove forest now we'll talk about some medicinal plants because um, plants and uh, plants are very very helpful for us so in medicinal plants means the plants which somewhere or the other help us okay and provide something um, uh, provide one or the other kind of medicine to us so we have um, around 2000 medicinal plants that have been described in ayurveda and at least 500 are in regular use okay so where do we uh, get these medicines 
med these medicines are basically uh, are formed by medicinal plants so for uh, we have several plants in india so we'll study few of them first is uh, sarpanganda sarpanganda is a plant that is used for treating um, a blood pressure and this is a kind of a plant that is only found in india next we all know the anti uh, bacterial or anti bacterial properties of neem so it's very very useful in uh, daily uses as well so few of them are uh, jamun jamun is very very useful its juice is very very healthy and it has digestive properties the seeds of jamun are also uh, used uh, uh, we can convert the seeds of jamun into powder and then powder is very very useful in uh, for diabetic patient okay next is arjun arjun is, uh, help us in uh, curing ear ache and it regulate the blood pressure tulsi we all know we all uh, you know uh, almost we all have in the in our houses it is used in curing cough and cold and that is why we consider tulsi as our deity because it's very very useful next is kachanar it cures uh, asthma now here is a fun activity for you all in which you have to identify the type of forest that is seen in this picture what type of forest is this and what type of forest is this take it to uh, take few minutes and um, observe these trees what ref what does they reflect so talking about first uh, talking about first it is obviously evergreen forest because the trees are in very very high volume next is any guesses these are mangrove okay sorry for the poor handwriting so these are mangrove forest man uh, how we can identify mangrove forest as we can see there is a river or a stream that is flowing and the roots of these trees are under the uh, tree uh, under the river okay so that is why they are mangrove so that's about it in the types of vegetation we will continue to learn more about wildlife uh, in the next video